Normally a car review might start stood in front of the car or maybe from the driver's seat. But this is a luxury car, so I'm gonna review it from the perspective of the owner. That means a businessman sat in the back. Now this car is from around 1997, so while some of the technology in this now might be fairly commonplace, back in 97 and earlier, there was some fairly special stuff. One of my favorite features is the massage seats, which is a button fitted in the door here. This also has heated rear seats and there's a plethora of switch gear back here and frankly i don't profess to understand what all of these buttons do there are some really interesting touches with materials as well the first thing that leaps out is this amazing kind of like welcome to granny's for a cup of tea kind of a doily material i don't know if this is toyota standard or not but it seems to be fairly commonplace in japanese cars and it's designed to protect the interior the materials used in the interior particularly the seats and these door cards is actually wool now some of these came with leather, but most of them had a wool interior. The reason for the wool is that it's a quieter, softer material. So it's considered more relaxing, kind of sound damping. European cars, early European luxury cars also used wool and velour because anything with leather was seen as being rather working class, maybe linked to saddles and coachmen somehow, I don't know, but it's, uh, it's actually very, very nice. There are so many buttons and switches back here, I can't possibly list them all, but I'm gonna have a bit of an explore because it, it is so cool. The trim here is finishing genuine wood and I think it's redwood and the finish lines, the spaces between the panels when they actually meet are so tight, it's absolutely fantastic. I can actually move the driver's seat as well and I can also open a compartment in the front passenger seat to stretch my stinky feet through into the front to stretch out and relax true executive style. There's also an amazing compartment here with a logoed remote control this thing is absolutely fantastic so it's got a kind of early primitive mouse where you can scroll around the screen and select and there's like i don't know what half of these buttons mean there's an amazing user guide with this car as well which tells me that this vehicle also is equipped with a dictaphone so you can drive along dictating messages to your uh, secretary back at corporate hq i think it's also worth pointing out that the japanese perception of quality might be a little different to American or European tastes. Quality really starts with reliability because what is something quality if it's breaking down every two minutes? So a lot of these parts might seem a little plasticky or there might be quite a bit of plastic trim, particularly in the, in the front, which I'm not interested in because that's where my chauffeur sits, but you know it's gonna last forever. You might compare this to something like, I don't know, um, a Jaguar, for example, or a Maserati or something like that. And yes, they're wonderful cars. And you might argue that they're nicer finished, but they've got fewer technical features for the same sort of age and price of vehicle. And you definitely don't have the assurance that it's gonna work forever. And you kind of poke around in the boots and you poke around in the bonnet and you look for little bits that are wrong. You might look for rust or broken clips or trim and absolutely everything works in here and it's awesome. So that's enough from the back seat. I want to see what it's like to be a chauffeur for a day because this guy has a really interesting engine. This is a second series G50 from the mid 90s. But the century started back in 67 when Toyota celebrated the centennial of the birth of its founder, Sakichi Toyota, with a new flagship model. It had a number of technical firsts for Japan, including air suspension and automatic climate control. In over 50 years of production, there have only been three generations and they each follow that Rolls-Royce styling technique of deliberately making a big car look somehow smaller. The car I'm driving has a hell of an engine, a V12 with that Japanese gentleman's agreement thing of 276 bhp and a colossal 481 newton meters of torque. When this century was released, consider that it was two meters longer than a Mini and had as much torque as a contemporary 911. I've always wanted to drive one of these, and it's a first for many reasons. I've never driven a Toyota Century before, and actually, even though I'm a motoring journalist, I've never driven a V12 car before. I won't say it's silent, because it's a bit like a cruise ship. You know, you're surging along, but you are aware that somewhere in the bows there's a hugely torquey, powerful engine just whooshing you along, and that's how it feels to drive this. Now, there are one or two bits of this car which are shared with the wider Toyota family, such as, for example, this the mirror switch gear down there. I'm sure I've seen that in a Hilux or something, but I can forgive it because the rest of it's pretty special. But the engine is bespoke and is totally unique to this model. It's a V12 
and in the highly unlikely event of some kind of technical malfunction, it will actually run as two separate six-cylinder engines if half of the engine fails, and each bank has its own ECU. I think that's really smart. It also points the finger back to that Japanese definition of quality, and that quality really is deep-rooted in reliability. We've played with every single gadget we found on this car, and okay, some of it's in Japanese, so we don't always understand what it's saying, but everything seems to work, and I think that's a great testament to a hugely complex car that was designed a long time ago, and well, it's got quite a few miles under its belt, even if it does weigh two tons and is clearly a bit big for these country lanes, but it is a cool thing to drive. So the Toyota Century is a genuinely unique car. I don't think there's anything else like this. And those Rolls-Royce comparisons are nonsense. And aren't 70s Rolls-Royce is a little bit disgraced DJ image anyway? Okay, maybe that's harsh. This is a seriously special car. And above all, it has electro multivision. You don't get that in anything else. I absolutely love it. Thank you.